Hey everybody, welcome to part 9 in our series of making a custom ribbon in Microsoft Access. We are still discussing putting custom images on your ribbon. This video is meant to be an alternative to what we discussed in part 8. In part 8 we discussed storing your custom images in a table and then retrieving those images via a hidden form. In this video we're still going to store images in a table, the same table in fact as in part 8, but instead of using a hidden form we're going to find the image we're looking for with DAO and then save that image to our disk system and then send it to the ribbon using the load picture method. So let's take a look at our setup again really quickly. Over here in our database we have our images table. This is going to store images. Let's take a look at it in the design view very quickly. I have a record ID there which is an auto number. We're using that as our primary key as you can see. The image ID is a text field and image file is the attachment column that's going to hold our image. Now let's take a look at this take a look at our data that we have in there. Okay, the image ID column is meant to correspond to the control ID of whatever button we're trying to find an image for All right, to, to, to make our code nice and generic. I've got three rows in here. The first two are not going to correspond to anything on our ribbon. The only row in here that's going to correspond to a, a button control ID is this number four here, app icon. That's the control ID for the button we're going to be looking for. So next, let's take a look at our XML. All right, there we go. The button that we have set to look for a custom image is this button right here. It's got a button ID of app icon like we just saw in our table. We're using the get image attribute to execute this get image callback VBA method. And that's the only XML we need to concern ourselves with in this video. Let's close this. All right, let's head over to our code window and take a look at what we have over here. So I have an error function here that we're going to call if our get image callback can't find the image it's looking for so that we can fail a little more gracefully. Now, I had this in part 8, but I've beefed it up a little bit since then because I didn't have any error handling in this function and decided that I did need to have some. So quickly, what we're doing in here is if we can't get an image from our callback method, we're going to come here and display a red circle hand icon from our file system. So you get the path to our database and then get the path to a DB images subfolder that we have within that folder. Just load that in a string path and then set our function equal to the load picture for that path and then this error image that we have stored there. Now what I've added to this that we didn't have in part 8 was some error handling. Um, what I neglected to pay attention to when I originally wrote this was what if this image doesn't exist either we would have another error condition and our ribbon would fail to load so I've added an error handler down here as you can see uh, on error go to sub error we'll go down here and we'll set our function equal to nothing and return nothing in our image back to the ribbon when that happens it fails gracefully uh, the, the button is blank but we don't get an ugly ribbon UI error message so moving up here to our get image callback. This is the, the method that will retrieve our image for us. We have some new stuff up here. We have two record sets. We have a record set that's going to iterate through our images table. That's this guy over here. And then we have a record set that's going to iterate through the record set that is within the attachment column. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. We'll get to that. We have a variable for our SQL and then a variable for the various file paths and file names we're going to be dealing with. Now this method involves saving the image from our table onto our disk. We need a place to put that and we're going to use a temporary a temp folder to do that. So coming through we want to make sure that that temp folder exists. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to set a string path variable equal to the path for our database with temp added to the end of it. We're going to check to see if it exists using the directory function, feeding it string path and feeding it VB directory as a parameter. And if that is equal to a zero length string, then we know that it doesn't exist yet and we will make it. So I'm not destroying this temporary folder after we finish this method. I'm letting the folder stay out there even though I am going to kill the file that we save. I'm going to leave the folder out there. So this should only execute probably one time. Okay, next we need to get into our images table. So we're going to write a query here 
select image file that's the attachment column that's going to hold our images select image file from images where image ID equals control ID now control ID this method receives the control that's calling it so the control ID let's head back over to our forms as ribbons control ID is going to be this guy right here app icon if you remember correctly in our table we've got a row with app icon in image ID so that's what we're looking for here right we're looking for the row that's got app I has got a control ID in the image ID column I'll populate our record set with the current DB open record set being SQL and telling it we just need a snapshot then we're going to interrogate the record count property of that record set if we didn't find anything we got no hits we don't have an image for that button in the in our table we're going to call our error function which we just looked at if we did get a hit though this is where it gets fun we have another record set to deal with so let's take a quick look at a reminder of how these attachment columns work so here's our table I've got three rows in it each of these has one attachment as you can see inside so to speak and this is conceptual not actual inside this column we have an entire another record set and that record set has three columns that we know about file data file name and file type file data is the, the column that holds the actual binary data of the image or whatever document we're storing in here file name is the short name of the file that we loaded in there the original name and the file type is the original extension so we know what type of document we have in there now I'm only storing images in this table and I'm only storing one image per row up here however Microsoft is allowing us to store more than one image in a single row up here so it could look like this where we could have multiple images or multiple documents in a single row up here. Now Microsoft tells us not to worry, they are storing these using a regular normalization rules. So that suggests to me that we don't actually have multiple rows of data strung end to end inside this column. More than likely we have a hidden table that Microsoft is generating a key here and then we have rows in this hidden table with those keys on it and they are behind the scenes doing a join for us to get from here to here. I haven't seen that, I don't know that for sure, that's just uh, an educated guess. So what we have to do, okay, our RS images record set, the first query we executed got us to this, got us to this row. Now we need to load this record set down here with potentially more than one row. We need to load that into another record set. Come back over to our code. And that's what we're doing here. We have another record set here and notice this record set is a record set 2. This is a new record set type that's meant to deal with these parent-child relationships, parent relationship that Microsoft has created here. So we, we need to use record set 2 when we are loading an attachment column. RS images, which is this record set here, what we just loaded. Image file, that's our attachment column. Dot value gets loaded into RS attachment, our record set 2. From there again, we want to test to make sure we do have some rows in there to work with. Okay. If our record count is equal to zero, we'll come to our else, and again, we're going to call our error function. But if we do have rows, we'll go into here. And I want to get the file name of the image we've found. And again, another reminder, the storage rules I have for myself and this code is that we're going to use only the first row in this child record set. Okay, yes, you can store more images in there, and if you do, you're going to need to to add some code to this my code is assuming that we're going to start off on the first row and we're going to use that image so back over to our code you can see here when you open that record set you're going to be on the first record so there's no need to move around okay so we're on the first row so we're going to build a full path to this file we want to save using our string path which held the path to our temporary folder and we're adding to it a file name from our table loading into string file name. We're going to check to see if that file exists already. If it does, we want to delete it. So file system not kill string file name. Now we're free to save that image to disk. We use the file data dot save to file method. Okay, file data 
is remember the column that holds the actual binary data of the image and save to file does simply that it saves that image to file and you get to as whatever file name you give it here once we have it on disk then we can use the load picture method that we used earlier to send it back to the ribbon via there and that's all the code let's take a look at our ribbon and again when we go to the home tab we've got our blue circle icon like we expected to see. Now if we come here to our table, let's say we mess up our name. So now that we don't have, we've changed app icon app on app icon xx, that's not going to correspond to a button ID in the ribbon. I have to close my database because the uh, the get image callback has already run one time for this session and we haven't invalidated that button so it's not going to try to call it again. It's just going to keep it stored in memory. So let's close our database, reopen it. We should get our circle hand now. There we go. Now let's do one more thing. Let's make it even worse. Let's test the error handling that we had in the get error image function. Pull this up. Now here is the database, or excuse me. So here is the folder that's holding our database and the DB images, and we were going to pull our error image from here. Let's change the name of that error image so that it can't get a hit on that either. Close the database again, reopen it, go to our home tab, and you see now we have a blank button. So we got a, a silent fail here, and this is something you have to decide how you want to deal with. Do you want to actually, uh, you know, pop up your own custom error message and tell your customers you have a problem with images, or do you want to just leave it blank? Um, I think personally I would notify them that uh, you know, there's a, an issue with uh, images on your ribbon so that they can call you and, and let you know um, but this is what you're going to get at some point but the point of this extra error handling that I added to this get error image error function was that we not get that ugly Microsoft UI error for the customers but instead we have the opportunity here in here to add you know, a, a message box of our own with a little more descriptive message and, and instructions for what we want them to do i.e probably call us. So that's it for this approach. A uh, little more VBA, a little more database code. And it, it, at first that record set within a record set might be a little bit wonky, but it, it's not too bad once you've done it once or twice. As usual, I'll put a link to my blog down below, which has the full code listing of the XML and the VBA we showed in this video. Hope you got something out of this video, and we'll see you next time.